So, where could this new strain of Ebola have come from? And if you want to know what I mean by new strain, please see the video that I posted yesterday on whether or not you would survive quarantine. Now, funnily enough, the US CDC have a patent on types of Ebola viruses. Now, if you were to ask a biological weapons specialist what you would need to do with Ebola to make it a viable weapon, his first answer would probably be make it less lethal. Now that sounds a bit weird but the, th the problem is that the original Ebola virus killed within five to seven days of a patient first showing symptoms. That is to say you got what looked like a heavy cold, five to seven days later you were dead. Now after the second or third day you'd be bedridden. This gives very little opportunity for infection and the thing with a biological weapon is you want it to infect as many people as possible. So one of the key things would be to reduce the lethality of the virus so it takes longer to kill people and it might as a side effect take less take uh, less of the population when it does so. Now if we look at the new strain the new strain doesn't take five to seven days to kill people it takes around about fifteen to twenty hmm okay so then you need to think about what you need for a vaccine and what you need for a vaccine is pretty much the same thing um, except the virus needs to be more attenuated so it doesn't really do any harm yet it still needs to look enough like the original virus that it trips the immune system so there is a patent and here it is and you can see the number there and it's assigned to the government the US and the claims are an isolated virus H Ebola with various different genetic nucleotide sequences which obviously they've, they've um, published and an Ebola virus the claim from claim one which is killed well that would be what they call a, a dead vaccine which they are often not very very um, effective the Ebola virus at claim one which is an attenuated H Ebola virus that means it has less of an effect the virus at claim four wherein at least one property of the attenuated H Ebola virus is reduced from amongst infectivity, replication ability, protein synthesis ability, assembling ability or cytopathic effect. In other words, a detuned virus that won't have so much effect. So this whole patent on the surface isn't about bioweapons at all as some people have tried to say um, it is in fact about producing an antidote or some type of injectable vaccination so let's have a look at the history Now, when you have an attenuated virus, it's pointless. That's designed for humans. <coughs> it's 
it is pointless testing it on other species absolutely pointless because you're talking about the human bodily defense mechanisms not the bodily defense mechanisms of an ape or a rabbit or a guinea pig you're talking about human beings so in the past what's been done to test things like this well 1995 evidence that the biological agents used in the Gulf War had been manufactured in Houston Texas and Boca Raton Florida and tested on prisoners in the Texas Department of Corrections so there is a history here of the US government testing biological agents on its own people on military personnel And in 1990, more than 1,500 six-month-old black and Hispanic babies, not white babies for some reason, in Los Angeles are given an experimental measles vaccine that had never been licensed for use in the United States. Parents were never informed. So, America's recent record on experimenting with novel substances which can't be animal tested such as vaccines and here in 1990 is a vaccine case as others as you go past um, now it's not very good so you have this nice patent you have some Ebola virus samples that you think might do to create a vaccine from but you want to find out the only way you can find out is by doing human experimentation recently you've had problems with doing human experimentation in your own country what better shield for your activities than to go into Africa where the Ebola virus occurs naturally and inject a few groups of the indigenous population and see what happens and I would suggest what happens in this case might be that the virus isn't as attenuated as you thought it was going to be it still kills so what you have by accident is more of a weaponized Ebola virus than a vaccine because it's still killing food for thought and as you go back through time obviously there's more and more cases So, it could very well be that this is a man-made strain of Ebola, that it was deliberately released, if you like, into the wild, thinking that it wasn't going to be virulent enough to kill. However, unfortunately, those scientists were wrong. Well, if you like this video, Please like and subscribe and of course share. Thank you very much.